for the straight line. Now, let's discuss the parabola. Let's consider a parabolic graph of the function f of x equaling to ax squared. I'm going to use ax squared and I'm going to assume that my a saying let's look at the parabola of the form fx equal to ax squared. This is a parabola whose turning point is at the origin. We discussed this in grade 10. Okay, but we are going to use this format uh, to bring out the the idea of function and an inverse function. Right. Uh, for us to find the inverse, say it we swap. So we shall have f of x being y equaling to a x squared. Right? If I swap my x for y and y for x, swapping will give us x is equal to a y squared. Then we make y the subject. Of course, if I'm making y the subject, I have to divide both sides by a. So I'll divide by a both sides. Then I'll have y squared is going to be x over a. Then I find the square root on both sides to remove the square. I'll have y is going to be plus minus square root of x over a. Remember the square root has two imaginary answers, plus and minus. Okay, so this can be f of x with an inverse notation being given as plus or minus square root of x over a. Now, let's sketch both graphs on the Cartesian plane and we see how they look. And we shall assume that a is greater than zero. It's a positive. If this is my Cartesian plane, x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero lines, that is the origin. Okay. I'm sketching the graph of fx is equal to ax squared. My graph will be smiling. Why? Because a, a is a positive. This can come out very clearly if you use point by point plotting. You select some few points, you sketch them as you get y. Okay. Right. So my graph is going to be smiling and this is my graph of f of x okay if i'm to sketch the graph of ax squared it will come out in that format now if i'm to reflect my graph of fx in the line y is equal to x our our line of symmetry that divides the cartesian plane into two y is equal to x these two graphs will have the same turning point okay but you must note here that if one half is in the second quadrant that half will come into into the fourth quadrant I'm going to use points to bring out this clearly. For instance, I'm going to assume that this point here is 3 and 3. Because remember, this is my y is equal to my y is equal to x. So if that is 3, that's also going to be 3. Okay. And also bring out that uh, 
I'm going to also estimate another point in this quadrant if uh, this is 3 okay that can also be negative 3 if this is 3 that can be negative 3 if that is 3 that can be negative 3 those are points okay on the graph of uh, in the graph of f so if 3 and negative 3, negative 3 swap is going to come in this quadrant which means it will be this is a negative 3 to become a positive 3 okay and this indeed quadrant the y's are what and negatives right so the x becomes the y the y becomes the x so we shall have a negative 3 and 3 and we have that point and we have the origin so we have like three points we can join them together you can join them together so your shape of f inverse will come out in that format i wish i had color pencils here so that you can see how this one is separated from the other one but by naming them this is f and that is f inverse the reflection of this through the line y is equal to x we try as much as possible it is a sketch it's not an accurate graph to ensure that at least the distance from the mirror line is the same as the image and the object okay so there is equal distance but like I said, this is a sketch. Now, when you look at these two graphs, the original graph f, I can say the function. Why? Because if I draw a vertical line test, it will cut it at one point. Right? So it is a function. Because it meets the vertical line test. If I draw a vertical line test, if I put one x value, I'll get one y value. But when you look at the inverse, if I draw a vertical line test, it's going to cut it at two points. It has this point and that point. So for one x value here, I'm having a positive y value and a negative y value. So the inverse is not a function because it's a one to two relationship. So one to two is not a function so in most cases they will ask you that make the inverse also a function if not a function how can we make it a function now before we go to that I want us to understand that originally when you look at our graph of F uh, in terms of domain and range domain domain of f of f of x our graph is going to the right is going to the left which means that all x values satisfy this graph of ours okay it's going to the right and left so we can say the domain because the domain are x values so we shall say all x values okay and the range will be for us to determine the range you look at the turning point of the parabola it is turning at the origin then you look at the shape of the parabola it is facing up which means that from the turning point going up all those are all the y values okay so because the graph of ours is above the x axis including the point of the turning point the point of origin we shall say that uh, the y values or the range is going to be y greater or equal to zero because it is above the x axis okay all y values that are greater and equal to zero satisfy to be the range now let's look at the inverse graph 
if we are to find the domain of of our inverse domain of our inverse graph okay all x values that satisfy this graph we see our graph is not on the right it's only on the left and it's starting also from the origin so which means that all x values satisfy to be that graph okay from zero going to the left going to the right okay x greater or equal to zero that is the domain because it's not this side only the side of the graph of the Cartesian plane so only x values from zero towards the right that are increasing at the x values that will satisfy this graph and when you look at the range of our inverse graph the graph is going up the graph is going down looking at the arrows which means that all y values satisfy to be the range now compare these two relationships when you look here in the original graph our domain was x all your values which is now the range our range was y values greater than zero now we're saying our domain is x values greater than zero which means that the what the swapping is correct okay so i might not even look at the graph if i know the range and the domain of the original graph i just swap them i just swap and say but in terms of the respective uh, values if the domain is x values then here is going to be the y values if the range is the y values in comes domain is going to be the x values so that must be noted good now let's see how we can restrict the graph so that the inverse is a function remember the inverse is a result of the original graph so there's nothing you can do to the inverse graph but we can do something on the original graph to make it to make it possible for us to get a function which is an inverse okay because the question will come and say is the graph a function no it's not a function why because it's a one to two relationship for every one x values i'm getting two y values then how can you restrict the domain of the original graph so that its inverse can be a function that's what we are dealing with now our graph initially we had uh, that graph which is f of x now how can i restrict this graph so that its inverse is a function we have seen it's not a function now what we do we look at the turning point of the graph please don't look anywhere just look at the turning point because at the turning point is where the graph is divided into two half so that we can at least uh, restrict one half and we remain with one half so when you look at this graph it has this half which is x less or equal to zero and we have this half which is x greater or equal to zero depending on the turning point so restricting i can remove the x less or equal to zero or remove this any of the two i have to remove one half of the domain right so for such a graph if i restrict by removing x great x less or equal to zero which means that i'll be left with the restricted graph is going to be that one so this is the restricted graph okay because i remain with only x greater than zero i've removed this half i'm remaining with that half so if i draw the inverse of this graph so this is the parabola which has been restricted okay so if i draw the inverse of that graph remember the inverse is a reflection via y is equal to y is equal to x so if i draw the inverse of this graph if that is my parabola the restricted one f of x okay for x greater equal to zero 
that's what it satisfies then its inverse then is going to be that half so this is my inverse and when you look at the inverse now which is drawn it's a one to one because if I draw a vertical line test it will cut it at one point now if somebody had removed x greater or equal to zero which means that he will be remaining with only that half of x, of f x less or equal to zero because we restricted the other half so if I draw my mirror line y is equal to x this graph will be reflected in the fourth quadrant in that manner okay so this is my f and that is my f inverse when you look at it, it is also a function because when you do a vertical line test it is cutting it at one point so that's how you can restrict a parabola for ax squared where a is a positive okay in two ways so some learners can restrict in that format and others can restrict in this format all of them are correct because we are only removing one half of the domain and we shall be able to get the inverse which is a function which is a one-to-one -one relationship as we go further we shall have questions that have been already restricted and how we deal with them we shall be able to handle them so I'm going to give you some examples some uh, some exercise then we shall be marking ourselves okay okay let's do some two examples then uh, we see what we do next good uh, example one eg uh, given a function f of x is equal to negative x squared okay one sketch the graph of f and f inverse on the same axis to is is f inverse a function that's the question three if no restrict the domain of f of x so that f inverse can be a function is a function solution let's try to work out this so you've been given a graph of f of x is equal to negative x squared negative x squared which means that our graph is not uh, smiling is sad looking at the value of a this is like saying negative 1 into x squared negative 1 implies that our value of a is less than 0 which means that our graph is going to be sad okay so you should even know the shape of the graph by looking at the parameters okay so that uh, you don't have difficulty in sketching them right the other thing you must note here is that our graph is turning at the origin as well okay yes I want you to look at this graph of f of x negative x squared being the same as negative into x minus 0 bracket squared 
plus 0. This looks familiar. Remember in grade 11 you said negative into x minus p squared plus q where q and p are turning points. So this has been simplified to that. So you must know that in this kind of graph or in this kind of graph the origin is the turning point. Okay? So I just have to draw my my graph. Okay? So we shall say if this is, this is my Cartesian plane it is easier to sketch parabola of such nature. Okay? I don't have to waste a lot of time. I just have to do something like that. Okay? That is my that is my parabola f of x. Okay? Which is sad. If this is my Cartesian line x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. Turning at the origin. The other points are the same. It is a divided half. Now they said sketch the graph of f and its inverse. So you have to find the inverse of this graph. Okay. But remember we say that the inverse is a reflection via the line y is equal to x. Okay. There's no need for us to find the equation of the inverse because they didn't ask us. Otherwise you can find it as well. That's not a problem. Okay, the normal way that like we did before. But first things first here. For me to sketch the inverse, I have to draw the line of symmetry that divides the Cartesian plane into two with a positive gradient. Okay. Right. That is my that is my line y is equal to x. Y is equal to x. Okay, so I have to reflect this graph via that line. This is my y is equal to x. So if I'm to sketch the two graphs, which means that if now it is in the fourth quadrant, it will become in the second quadrant. This one is within. We say that the image distance must be the same. So if I have a point here, which is uh, maybe positive x and negative y in this it's going to be swapping the swap which means that I will have a negative x and a positive y because they just swap around okay if I have a point in this quadrant which is positive x and negative y if I swap them because according to this line the x becomes the y the y becomes the x which means that in this I will have positive y and the negative x of the same value okay for instance, if my x here is 4, and this is going to be maybe a negative, uh, negative 5, okay, I'm just assuming, then here we shall have uh, negative what, 5 on the x, and shall have the 4 on the, on the what, on the y, as a point swapping around, okay, good, so I'll take this point, that point, in the, in the what, in the, in the second quadrant I'm going to use this point of intercept okay with the with my line so that my graph can come out properly so I can draw the first half passing through my point which has been reflected that point is symmetrical to that point okay and uh, this point is going to be symmetrical to the same point then I will see my graph coming out in that format it is a sketch. It is not accurate. Okay, but we try to bring out all the accuracy in the sketch. Okay, so this is going to be my f of f inverse of x. That is my original graph. And this is my inverse. This is my inverse. This is my inverse. Okay, let me not again destroy it. Now, when you look at the inverse, the question is asking is f inverse a function? We just have to use a vertical line test. If I draw my vertical line test, you can see that the vertical line test is going to cut it at this point and that point. So it's not a function. No, it's not a function. It's not a function. 
Why? Because it's a one to two relationship. I'm getting two values of y for one value of x, so it's not a function. Now, how can we make it a function? Then we have to restrict it. Saying if not, if no, restrict the domain so that the inverse is a function. We agree that for us to restrict, we have to look at the halves of the original graph, at the domain. Okay, when you look at this domain, all x values because it's going on the left, it's going on the right and it's going to the left. Okay, so I can remove one half of the domain so that the other one is what a function. So I can either say x could I equal to zero, I can also either remove x less or equal to zero. Okay, so let's restrict it and we see. Uh, restricting it so that we have a function, right? So if I'm removing uh, one half, if I remove x less or equal to zero, I'll remain with x greater than x greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that is my function remaining. Okay, and its inverse is going to be it's going to be in that manner. That is my f inverse which is being reflected through the line y is equal to x. You can see that that is a function because if you draw a vertical line test, it will cut it at one point. Okay? Now, uh, if others restricted it by removing... Uh, if others removed x greater equal to zero, which means that They are going to be remaining with the other half of the of the graph. So if we draw our line of symmetry, which divides the cartesian train into two with a positive gradient y is equal to x. Okay, if I draw my my inverse of this graph now, it will be in that format. So this is my f inverse. And that is my original f, which is being restricted, so that it can give us a function. So if I draw my vertical line test, it's going to cut it at one point. If I draw my vertical line test here, it's going to cut it at uh, at one point as well. That's how we can answer that question. But that is our second example, and our last example on parabolas. Before I give out work, mm. I think everybody can see it. It's saying that given the function of x, f of x is equal to 1 over 4x squared, and it is restricted. It is only in x less or equal to 0. So it has already been restricted. You cannot draw a full graph. Okay? Determine the equation of f inverse in the form of f inverse of x is equal to that. And also on the same system of axes, sketch the graph of f and f inverse. Indicate clearly the intercepts with the axis as well as another point on the graph, each of f and f inverse. So you can get one point that we can use. Okay, and we indicate it on both. Okay. Then 6.3 says that is f inverse a function? Give a reason for your answer. Right. Uh, f of x is equal to 1 over 4 x squared and uh, is restricted in x less or equal to 0. Now the question says that term in the equation of f inverse. For us to get the inverse of this graph, remember we said we have to write our f of x as y equaling to 1 over 4 into x squared first. Okay, that is my graph. Now in the form of y. Remember we said f depends on x. It's y. Then we swap. Swapping means we shall have x is equal to 1 over 4 y squared now. Okay, then we make y the subject. If I divide both sides by a quarter, I will have 4x is equal to y squared. Therefore, if I make find a square root on both sides, y squared will be equal to 4x. I find the square root, we shall have y is going to be 
uh, the square root of 4x, okay, plus or minus. Therefore, my inverse, because I said you must write it in the form of f inverse, so we shall say f inverse of x is going to be plus minus square root of 4x, okay, but also restricted in x less or equal to 0. So because the original graph was restricted, even the inverse should be restricted. So this is very important as well when you are stating our, our graph. Okay, so that is the inverse of f. They say on the same system, we have to sketch both graphs, f and its inverse, and indicate clearly the intercept with the axis, okay, and at least one point. Now this point we are going to indicate, uh, we can use any x value and we determine any y value of course. When you look at our graph that has been given, it is an increasing parabola. Okay? So, an increasing parabola, the original graph is an increasing parabola because our a is greater than what? Zero, so it should be smiling if it is full, but now it is half and it has been restricted in x less than or equal to zero. So that is its domain. Okay? So if I'm to draw my my parabola, okay? That is my Cartesian plane, people don't get scared. I don't know whether the lines are straight. I'm using a free hand. Right? That is my x is equal to 0, my y is equal to 0. Now, if I'm to draw a full parabola of that nature, it will be something like that. Because it's greater than 0, it will go on. Okay, but we don't want to see that. Because the graph has been reflected, I mean restricted for only x less than equal to zero so I have to draw only one half okay I cannot draw the other half if I draw the other half then I'm disobeying that rule I'm breaking laws here it's not allowed to break laws okay so we shall only draw one half I will not complete it but if I was to complete it it will go up to smile okay but uh, the question says that draw only the graph of f which has already been restricted according to that domain okay and its inverse Okay, so this is my, this is my F, okay, which is restricted, and the inverse of such a graph, we said we have to draw, we have to draw, Y is equal to X, our mirror, so whatever is here must come that side, so this is going to be the domain swap. Remember the domains swap. If the domain here was x greater or equal to zero, here is going to I mean x less or equal to zero here is gonna be it's going to swap and you will see it. And this is my new graph now. If I'm to sketch it, it's going to be of that nature now. Okay. They say that uh, indicate the turning points, the axis, the axis, the intercepts is zero. The x and y intercept is the same because that is the turning point. So that is the origin. So I can only use one point that I can uh, I can uh, put on the graph and I see if uh, if my x is 2 if my x is negative 2 actually if my x is negative 2 if my x is negative 2 on the graph my y is going to be, if I put negative 2 in my graph here, we shall have uh, 4 over 4 and we shall get 1. So if I put negative 2 here, I'll have 1. Okay, so my point, I can even call it A. Point A is going to be negative 2 to 1. That's one point. We can also swap it and become this side. So in this side, it's going to be, it's going to be now, 1 and negative 2 because they are swapping. It's going to be 1 and negative 2. The y becomes the x, the x becomes the y. 
simple so this is my a and that is my a prime i can hold, i can say that that these two points are symmetrical about the line y is equal to x the question proceeds and says that is f inverse a function give a reason for your answer this is my f inverse is it a function what do we do we draw a vertical line test we draw a vertical line Okay, so if you do a vertical line is cutting our inverse at one point, so it is a function. So you can say yes, it's a function. Reason why? Because because the vertical line because the vertical line cuts the graph at one point now it should be noted that because our original graph was a function even its inverse is going to be a function as long as the original graph was restricted function even this one is going to be a restricted uh, function okay our inverse and when you look at it the domain is going to be x greater than or equal to zero so because this is plus or minus okay for the y values so which will be correct we say that x greater or equal to zero that our graph of the inverse is only possible is only true for only y x values that are greater or equal to zero thank you very much hope you enjoyed the lesson uh, you see on the work we are going to give you try to first go through the notes then you try to do, attempt the work that's going to be given to you Class, this is our homework or this is our work that follows the lesson you have just had. If all is well and the questions are answered very correctly, we shall proceed to the exponential graph. Okay, so we shall do questions 1 to question 5 and uh, I want you to take these questions, copy them in your book, and uh, try them out. Then you'll give us the feedback. We shall do marking corrections on the group. Hope everyone received the group link. Those are very beautiful questions that we can try out on our own. Okay, they are all in line with what I've just discussed. These are only beginner questions and they are a bit simple. Okay, we are going to have more serious questions that will bring out uh, the inverse function.